Hi, everybody. Have you ever wondered how you could improve your English or maybe just keep up to date with your language skills if you're an advanced user? It's true that you never finish learning. It's one of the things that motivates me most as an English language teacher and as a foreign language student of many languages. And so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ideas for enhancing your English some tools, some resources, some inspirations, I hope, that will bubble up and give you ideas about how you can improve and maintain your English language skills um, with a friend, at home, in groups, or independently, knowing that there's never enough time in the classroom to address all the things that you might need to know, vocabulary, listening, speaking, reading, writing, and uh, mastering grammar as well. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and get started this morning with that topic. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Jennifer Euler. I am the Regional English Language Officer based at the US Embassy in Tallinn. And my office supports the teaching and learning of the English language um, in this region. And I'm really excited to share with you a presentation that I think is a lot like blowing bubbles. I don't know if you've blown bubbles recently. I have with um, some children in my life. It's impossible to just blow one bubble, almost impossible. When you do, you have many bubbles floating. I hope that this will be an enhancement to things you already know, and a few ideas that might bubble up for extra practice. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first bubble or idea that I have for enhancing English is participating. I'll tell you a little bit more about what I mean but there are so many opportunities online. I know this, um, as many opportunities as bubbles. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to figure out which course is good, what ID website can be good. We can be blinded by all of the opportunities. So I wanna point out to you where my focus is and where I think that you might find some treasures to enhance your English. So the first suggestion I have for you is to participate in what is called a massive open online course. And we have many massive open online courses that are supported by the US Department of State, the Regional English Language Office, and what is called OPEN, or the Online Professional English Network. We have five MOOCs that are related to learning English. And all of these courses are free, they're online, and they combine English at the intermediate or upper intermediate level skills as well as a content topic. So these five are really fabulous. I haven't taken them all, but I've taken three of the five, which I think is pretty good. Um, English and journalism is about developing skills and looking at the focus of the history of journalism, different formats of journalism, and uh, what journalists might think about. So if it's an interesting topic to you, like it is for me, it might be one you want to explore. We have another course on English and media literacy. I've also taken this one. And it's a lot about understanding your digital environment and having some good conversations about bias that you might find in the media and how to kind of see around that or see a bigger picture. The third MOOC is on English and career development. This massive open online course looks at how you can prepare for an interview, how you can write your CV for a job application, or perhaps even an application to participate in a university program or an international program, maybe in the United States or elsewhere. Um, the fourth MOOC combines English and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So themes around, um, around science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM, um, along with developing your language skills. And the fifth MOOC is Business and Entrepreneurship. And I've also taken this one, although it's been a while ago, and it includes information about thinking about businesses, business plans, pitching your product, and then at the same time, developing some of your language skills around that topic. If you've never heard of a MOOC, that's okay, it's not too late. These massive open online courses are free of charge. They're self-paced. So you decide how fast or how slow you go. They're designed to be about five weeks long. They're five modules. 
In reality, if you are like a super speedy learner, you could finish it in five days. You would just be doing a lot of content every day. Um, if you want to take your time or you're a busy person, as I'm sure many of you are, you can spread out your learning over two months, for example. You'll see that these course dates I have listed here from October 3rd to December 23rd of 2022. You can take advantage and enroll now. There's no cost, so you can also enroll, look around and decide which MOOC that you want to take. They will be repeated again in January. So if you don't finish them now or you don't have time, don't fear. These happen on a cycle three or four times a year, all through the openenglishprograms.org website. Okay, an online, there are many online courses. And we know that people have good intentions, kind of like going to the gym to work out. You have a good intention and then like things just get in the way and change your schedule. At least that happens for me. So I have some suggestions that might help you participate um, in a massive open online course. These are the many, 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 many other courses that exist. Um, you may want to download the MOOC on your phone. The journalism MOOC I took almost entirely on my phone. It's in a platform called Canva, and it has pretty good uh, visibility on the phone. And then you could do it while you're riding the bus to work or on the train uh, visiting a friend, kind of filling in some of those gaps in your normal day, your normal schedule with a little bit of enhancement for your English language skills. The second suggestion I have is to find a friend, find a buddy. We have this expression in English of the buddy system. It's for little kids, kind of like don't get lost, make sure you know where your buddy is. Um, but I think it works for adults too. We're often more likely to be successful if we do something together with somebody else. And so you might find a friend and decide like, look, <clears throat> we're serious. We're going to take this career development MOOC together, check in and maybe hold each other accountable or share some of the products that we're creating like by CV in English together. So that's another idea. My third idea is about organizing something called a MOOC camp. There's more information about MOOC camps on the website that's listed here. But basically, a MOOC camp is not finding one friend, but finding a group of friends. And you decide to take the media literacy MOOC together, for example, and then you meet synchronously, maybe at a coffee shop, maybe on Zoom, doesn't matter, that is up to you, to talk about the content, to compare your ideas. Um, I did this with a group of work colleagues about two years ago. We took a data, a data literacy uh, MOOC camp, not one of these. We organized to all take the same MOOC, and then we met for coffee on Wednesdays when we were taking the MOOC. And it was really motivating for me to be able to have conversation and to ask questions when there was something I didn't understand or I wanted more clarification on. It's possible that you take one MOOC and it leads to another MOOC and another MOOC and another MOOC. And so if the idea of free online courses appeals to you, there are many, 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 many other online courses that are in English about topics that maybe you're passionate about, learning how to sew, gardening, um, as I mentioned, like uh, data visualization and et cetera. You can look on major platforms like Coursera, Canva, edX, et cetera and do use these same principles. So I encourage you to kind of look around you, know what's available and to make a plan with a friend maybe or by yourself to kind of make this a daily habit to participate. Okay, so I have another idea. <laughs> and oops, sorry, this idea is about writing. I think you can agree with me, maybe, that writing is one of the most difficult skills to master in any language, right? And we don't, you never, never get enough practice. So this is a big bubble <laughs> that we're filling because um, learning writing independently, I think can feel daunting, but like anything, practice makes perfect. In order to be a good writer, you need to write. So I wanna provide with you a few resources that might inspire you to explore writing in more detail. Um, the first is the Essay Writing Resource Center. This was developed together with our partners at Education USA and the Regional English Language Office, originally in South America, but the content is all in English. And it was created by a specialist with nine modules that was thinking about how 
university writers could be more successful in the Anglo-European writing models, both for writing application essays, but also longer term success with um, organization strategies, vocabulary, etc around academic writing, which is very different than writing on social media or um, writing maybe that you've done of personal essays in class. This resource includes videos, some model essays, exercises and quizzes so that you can um, use your muscles. And there are nine different modules, including tips on um, application essay writing, writing for STEM, writing for business, writing for law, and preparing your CV. The great thing about this particular resource center, it is not a massive open online course. Instead, it's a place where you can go and you can do module one and module eight, or just do part of module four. So you can skip around like a reference book and choose the information that is most use useful to you. Um, there's a lot here on improving your academic vocabulary and thinking about organization, getting motivated to write some strategies so you can get started, and lots and lots of models. So if this sounds appealing to you, I encourage you to take a picture of the QR code, but also I will leave a list of links with the organizers so they can share those with you as well. So that's one idea for writing. Um, if you're just a writing nerd, and all of these ideas are coming to you about how you might practice your writing on your own. I have a number of resources that are listed here that might be useful to you. Um, these are all in the public domain and they include a combination of writing tips for non-native speakers of English, samples of how to organize your citations, explanations of grammatical points that you see frequently in different types of academic writing, videos that will coach you through the different steps of academic writing. I have several favorites here. These are sites that I regularly use. Um, in particular, I can tell you I've been using the OWL or the Purdue Online Writing Lab for about the last 30 years of my life. I discovered it when I worked in a writing center a long time ago, and you will find there so many resources that are useful to you. Ohio University and Annenberg Foundation also have videos, if that's better for you, you want to listen and absorb or watch um, about academic writing. And Hippocampus is a newer resource for me, but it's also just got a lot of very, very, very good writing resources. I would say to you that you don't become a better writer by watching videos. You become a better writer by iterations of writing. So repeating, revising, reviewing, processing, and simply picking up your pen or your fingers and keyboard and putting, um, putting them to work. And I know that I can be what is called a reluctant writer when I feel like a task is very big. And some of these resources will help you also to get started. So I encourage you to look at these if you're interested in improving your writing skills in English. Okay, what about listening? When you think about your diet of English language improvement, listening is very important and there are so many great resources. In fact, I could talk to you about 100 places to listen and learn where there's good, authentic language practice. And that's one of the problems, right? If you go online and you look for a podcast or you look for language materials and you put in a general search term, you're likely to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sites. And they may not be ones that you're interested in. So I'm going to make two specific suggestions that are based on my own listening diet things that I listen to to stay in touch um, with authentic use of English and that I can imagine using as a teacher or a learner. So let's go ahead and look at these bubbles. This is a new podcast um, for me. It's part of a bigger um, podcast called The Hidden Brain that's part of National Public Radio, which is kind of like the American version of BBC, the British Broadcasting uh, Company. And there's so much great material. My Unsung Hero is a podcast that is pretty short. All of the episodes, I've just pulled some examples here, 
are two or three minutes long, and they're narrated by an American from different places, different professions, and with different accents. And they talk about something that happened to them that was difficult, dangerous, or uh, potentially life-threatening. And someone who helped them through it. So kind of a hero who didn't know they were a hero, an everyday hero. And often this is a person that is unknown to the speaker. So they're talking about somebody who maybe helped them find their wallet, did something kind, gave them a ride, um, pointed them in the right direction at a moment that was really important. So you can see here, you know, three different examples. These are pretty different. Um, but I think, and actually we just talked about writing. So there's one here on a uh, struggling writer. This is kind of about people saying thank you to someone anonymous in their life. I like them because they're optimistic, they're powerful, and they're kind of what I need sometimes, just a little bit of optimism in my day and positivity to remind me as a human that there are small things I do every day that might be helping someone else out and I can't, I can't see them. And so it inspires me to be a better person. In terms of language, I think they're a great practice because they're not very long. So again, you can download this and listen to it on your commute, when you're walking to university or going to work. It won't take a lot of time. And you could even listen to it more than once. And instead of taking three minutes, it would take six minutes of your life. You would be a happier person, but you're also getting really good, authentic content from a lot of different walks of life that help you think about the United States, maybe think about the world in a different way. And I believe that they take um, submissions from around the world. So you could even consider um, submitting your own story of an unsung or an unknown hero um, that helped you with some act of kindness. All right, so that's one suggestion I have for you. The second suggestion I have for you is a podcast as well. You can listen to it online or you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And it's called StoryCorps. And this has been around for a while. You can see here, it's been around since 2003. And they're also very short, three, three and a half minutes long. They're interviews between two people who want to talk about a specific moment in history, to pass on wisdom, to share their lives, and to also leave a story for future generations. This repository with StoryCorps is the largest single collection of human voices ever gathered. They're really powerful stories. For example, I can remember a very meaningful one about two um, garbage truck drivers um, who worked together on the same route for years and years and years and years and years. And um, this is an interview where one, the, the two guys who work together interview each other about that route and what riding on it meant to each other. They're thematic. So you might find, for example, around Valentine's Day stories about love, or we just celebrated Veterans Day in the United States where we honor all of the men and women who have served in um, conflicts and wars and in the different branches of service in the United States. So there are stories about veterans, um, other kinds of stories, depending on the time we just had Indigenous Peoples Month. So there are stories about um, Native Americans in the United States talking about what it's like to be an American Indian. You can do a search to find topics that are interesting to you. And you could, you know, binge, listen to several of them um, and not take a lot of your time. They produce a new story frequently. So I have it on my podcast aggregator. And I think that I receive a new notification that there's a story core episode every week. Um, so you, it's a way to freshen up your English, listen to a lot of different voices, a lot of different perspectives, ages, geography, all of those things um, that really exercise your ability to listen to different accents, but also understanding of regional varieties of English in the United States. Okay, so sounds so easy, right? Listen, but I want to let some of these good ideas bubble up and give you some reinforcement 
you can listen to these podcasts or many, many, many others, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with my like hundred favorite podcasts. Instead, I show, chose two that I think are good for language learning. You know, make it a habit. They say that it takes, you know, a few times to develop a habit. So put in your headphones instead of listening to music when you're commuting, when you're cooking, when you're working out. You don't have to listen to an English language podcast for an hour. You could just do it for three or five minutes before you rock out to your music or listen to something else. I think that habit is important. You'll find it's also empowering. So I have recently, well, in the last five years, I learned Brazilian Portuguese and it's a beautiful language. I really enjoyed learning it. And I remember my teacher suggested to me a few podcasts. And the first time that I was walking, I was walking to work or school or something, I was listening to a podcast and I realized I understand it. I can participate in this. It felt so empowering and it really was a good part of my diet just in giving me lively, authentic, speedy English that I wouldn't have found in a language classroom. Um, if you wanna be serious, about improving your language skills, especially your listening skills, I would encourage you to listen more than once. We do this in English language classes because you pick up more details the more times you listen. So what you don't hear the first time when you're just listening for meaning, you might be able to pick up vocabulary or some pronunciation or an idiomatic expression if you listen to something two or three times. I've suggested to you very, very short uh, podcasts because I think that it makes it more possible to listen to something more than once. We have short attention spans. So if you listen to something that is three minutes, listening to it a second time or a third time is not completely unreasonable. Many uh, podcasts, including the ones I've mentioned, have a transcript so you can read and listen at the same time if you're maybe not on your phone, but if you're on your computer. If there is a transcript and you're listening more than once, I suggest that maybe you don't use it at the beginning, but you come back to it later and you can use the transcript to explore things you don't understand, to pinpoint or find exactly moments where there's an accent, a timing, a voice, a stress that you would like to imitate or use in your own speech patterns. And then my last recommendation, we're social creatures. We do things better in groups, as I've already mentioned. Um, maybe make a decision with a classmate, a friend, a teacher, family member um, to listen to something together. I never thought of doing this. So book clubs are pretty popular in the, in the United States and in global communities where I've lived. And I think we all know what that means to read a book and then come back and talk about it together. I have a podcast group. And so during the pandemic, I was reunited with two old friends um, that I met 25 years ago when we were Peace Corps volunteers. And we had kind of fallen out of touch. And we organized a Zoom meeting as one did during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we discovered that all three of us really like each other, but we also really, really like po podcasts. And so we decided to form a group. And since gosh, like June of 2020, we've been selecting a short series podcast that has four or five episodes. And then we meet on Zoom the next month to talk about what we've listened and also just to gossip and catch up with each other. Um, it's really motivating and it's enabled me to listen seriously to a number of topics that maybe I wouldn't have chosen otherwise. It's exposed me to a world of ideas and some great listening because there's so much out there. So if you're, if you like podcasts, I would encourage you to seek a topic that you want to explore or know more about, and then maybe find a group that you can listen, to, listen with together so that you can discuss and maybe make connections or, or help each other, um, be accountable for listening to the podcast. All right, so listen. What about watching? Yeah, yeah, I know. You probably watch several series. You probably watch movies in English with subtitles. 
but do you watch them intentionally and do you watch them for learning? So I have a suggestion for intentional watching with the purpose of enhancing your English. So here's another idea that has bubbled up to the surface. Um, we have public broadcasting service or PBS in the United States. It's a free, it's public, it's supported by donations, but it's a free channel that has an online version as well as I think every American home has this particular channel with lots of great programming. One particular series I think is interesting for language learning. And this is really about the United States. So understanding various people and moments in history. It's called the American Experience. The website from PBS has like a million bajillion different resources, but I'm pointing you to this one because a lot of the digital pieces, the videos are very, very short. So you'll hear, see here that there's kind of a few minutes all the way up to like seven minutes. They're not very long. They're on topics that relate to history and contemporary life in the United States and in the world. So you can see about, you know, Joseph Pulitzer. What about blue jeans? I mean, we all wear them. Do we ever think about like, where do they come from? How they got a bad name? Um, yellow journalism. And I don't know if you ever heard of Hearst, but very famous, um, influential person in the history of journalism in the United States. Um, Sandra Day O'Connor, first woman on the Supreme Court. And there's a lot more. I just pulled a few random episodes to kind of show you. And the reason why I like these is because I think they expose us to something educational, but also bring history into our present day life in a way that builds a connection that might be different than watching an episode of your favorite series on Netflix. They also aren't long. So you can pick and choose to make these part of your watching diet without spending hours watching a documentary film. You can also watch several different um, digital shorts that are on the same theme if it's interesting to you. And they're short enough that you can watch them multiple times. So in general, with watching in English, and including this, this resource from PBS, I suggest that you watch with catch, captions sometimes, realizing that they might make you lazy in terms of your listening. Um, sometimes it can be good to consolidate if. And I'm suggesting that you use captions in English for English programs uh, because it might help you make sound and word connections. But I also would suggest that sometimes you watch without. If you're going to watch multiple times, I would suggest watching without and then watching with captions because I think it provides more of a challenge and also stretches your ability to listen as well as to read. So think about that. If you're building in some of this watching that's shorter, so not a two hour movie, but like a seven minute clip um, or even shorter, like three minutes um, to be more intentional. And I think that's mainly the point here. I think that we watch a lot of things in modern life, whether they're YouTube videos or um, pieces on social media or streaming options but a lot of it isn't very intentional. So you have it on to relax, you have it on to hang out, maybe in the background. I think if you want to enhance your English, you need to watch very intentionally, pay attention. And related to that, I think is this idea of diversifying your watching diet. If you always watch the same kinds of things in the same genre about the same kinds of people, you're only being exposed to a pretty narrow band of English. And so it's good sometimes to stretch and to find some new, new content like this American, American experience from PBS. Another suggestion is shadowing speech patterns. This is something that I've seen people have a lot of fun with. It's kind of the equivalent of lip syncing. So you're not in your first watching, because this would be really hard to do, but after you've watched a short clip more than once, maybe using the captions that you speak with the person who is narrating or interviewing or talking, 
um, at the same time to kind of tune your ears into intonation patterns going up and down and then also um, pauses and things like that that can be very effective you can also do these with famous speeches and maybe in a last iteration you can turn the sound off and you can be the speaker for portions of it this is a great way to develop a better ear but also to bring language that you're consuming passively into your active voice and your active um, usage of English. So I encourage you to watch, but watch intentionally. All right. So we talked about writing earlier. I know that's a hard skill. Um, depending on your personality and your ability to absorb risk, because language speaking is definitely risky, um, you may want to practice your speaking and so this is another idea idea that kind of like bubbled to the surface when I was thinking about sharing with you. I think one of the best things that you can do to speak is to find people to speak to, speak, people you like, uh, people with which you have a topic. We talked about MOOC camps with those massive open online courses earlier. We also talked about podcast groups. This seems like an old idea, it is an old idea, but it's a really good one. Um, consider making an English club. You do not need a native speaker of English um, to make it fun and meaningful. And so there are a number of resources for free that will tell you like, hmm, how can you lead? How can you start an English club? What are some topics that you could address? And how can you make it something that is sustainable as a group so that everybody has some sort of role and interest? You can find it on AmericanEnglish.state.gov, download these resources for free, and also look at some hot tips for successful English clubs. I have been a member of English clubs. I have led English clubs, and I've also been a member of other foreign language clubs. And it can be really fun if you have the right group of people. And I think actually should be intentional about making it fun. It doesn't have to be serious. This is outside of class. It's not a class. And the idea is to use language rather than to correct each other's language. Not that you can't ask for a piece of vocabulary or discuss something you find interesting, but to kind of be loose about it so that no one feels like you're policing each other like you might um, in a language class. Another suggestion I have for you is to find something to do together, an experience you can have. This could be reading an article that's selected by somebody in the group about contemporary life. It could be listening to something. It could be watching something together. It also could be as simple as like playing a game or making some food. Um, as a group, because this tends to like really break down some of our barriers and give us something to talk about. If you come to an English club and everyone's like, oh, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. I don't know. It, it doesn't tend to be very successful. But if you set an intention for something that you can experience together, it tends to be a group that develops relationships and wants to come back together over and over again. Another hot tip about English clubs from this guide is how important it is to structure your time so that your, your club or your group starts and finishes at a certain time. This just helps people feel welcome. And also like things are going to happen for the hour they're supposed to happen, not 30 minutes later and go into the evening. Not everybody has so much time. And so making sure that there are kind of some agreed upon ground rules for the group um, to be to be together for a certain period of time. No one has to feel like they're missing out um, if they have to leave early. You wanna be very welcoming. Maybe this sounds very uh, obvious, but it's not. When new people come, you wanna make sure that they feel like they're part of your group to make introductions. And you may wanna take advantage of guests. So if you have a relative or a friend or somebody visiting or maybe even a expert English speaker from another country or from another place, you can build them into your English club so that you have a chance to interact and learn something from that person. 
I've definitely seen guest speakers as a successful strategy for English clubs that have had enough momentum to exist over a long period of time. And then my last suggestion uh, of, of many is consider having a multimedia space or social online space. I'm not going to advocate one form of social media or another, but sometimes it's nice for group cohesion for you to be able to share things that you see from one day to another, whether it's by email or some sort of messaging service or a group chat um, that you can be encouraging each other or just sharing like, hey, I saw this word today or I this video caught my eye. I'm going to listen to it. Why don't you watch it too? And to encourage each other to have English as part of your of your diet. I think it can be easy to think of English clubs as something that are for kids or for people who don't have strong language skills. But the best English clubs that I have had have been multi level and often multi generational. So you have a reason to talk to people that maybe in everyday life you don't cross paths with all the time. And finally, they they are include also people who use English frequently. I enjoy an English club because I learned something about the dynamics of language learning and also modern language usage. Finally, if you've never heard of an American space, I want to remind you that we do have American spaces across the region. You can find more about them on the US Embassy web page, but it might be a place where you can go free of charge to take part in an English club or English language activities. And so I encourage you to kind of check that out as a place where you could go maybe find some new friends or plug into an English club that's already been started. Okay. So we have writing, speaking, watching, listening. Well, what about reading? We read a lot of things every day. I'm sure you read a lot of things in English, maybe for your studies, maybe for your work, a combination of both leisure time as well. Um, back to that idea of kind of diversifying what we watch. I have a couple of suggestions to diversify your reading and make it part of a habit that you can establish for yourself. Um, the American English website I mentioned earlier AmericanEnglish.state.gov has five or six graded readers that are for high intermediate learners. They have a controlled amount of vocabulary um, and they're often in chapters that can be read in chunks. So you don't have to sit down and read the entire book. What's great about them is you can download for free the text, like for an ebook or just a PDF if you want to read it on your phone or computer. And there also is audio that you can listen to. They're narrated, it's narrated by um, a professional actor. It's something you can slow down or speed up or listen to in real time. They're specifically for language learners. So it's a little bit easier to, to grab onto maybe than picking up a huge novel or book if, that, if you don't feel ready for that. It's also less time consuming. I pulled this in particular because there are a number of stories. Short stories can be a great way to practice and enhance your English without spending 100 hours. And there's something you could build into your daily habit. If you read and listen at the same time, you could do that on your commute. You could do it every evening or every morning or once a week. I think building in a schedule of when you're going to enhance your English is really important. I happen to really like Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, and so I, if you have never read Edgar Allan Poe, you're missing out. Um, there's great stories, some of them a little bit creepy, um, but they're all really, really good. So I can suggest this to you. You can download it for free and then you can look around for the other um, graded readers for language learners that are on AmericanEnglish.state.gov. Edgar Allan Poe is also a poet. I happen to like poetry um, and I feel like I don't read enough of it maybe I don't know kind of gets away poetry feels like something philosophical and contemplative to sit down and absorb I love love language and so hearing someone play with language in a way grounds me and connects me to humanity 
the National Poetry Foundation, this is just a screenshot, um, has a daily poem. You can subscribe to receive a poem a day in your inbox. They're often very short, like one screen on my phone long. Um, you can read them. You can also listen to them. I think the interesting thing about poetry is often a very complex idea is presented using very simple words. And those words are sometimes everyday words and sometimes highly descriptive words that you might not find elsewhere. So if vocabulary is something you're interested in expanding, I think poetry is a great way to do that. And it's also very enjoyable. So I would encourage you to check out the National Poetry Foundation. All of these resources are for free. And perhaps it's just a moment for you, like it is for me, when you sit in the morning with your coffee and have a moment of joy in the language, but also a little bit of exploration of your imagination. And so, yeah, I can, I can suggest this one um, as well. There are many other things you can read if you're into news or sports or some hobby that, that might be crafting or metalworking, I don't know. You can definitely read about it. You can read about it in English. So some suggestions I have for reading, if you wanna enhance your English, not just passively consume language, would be to subscribe. Subscribe to some various feeds, things that you're passionate about, that you are interested in reading in your native language, because you will be more motivated to find out about those things in English as well. Um, I had a student who was really into like technology. So subscribing to updates from like Wired and tech, tech type um, resources was motivating for her. And so you can think about that. I would suggest reading and listening separately or together. It reinforces the skill to, to look and listen at the same time. Listen and read, <laughs> which is the same, but I think just a different um, focal point. Consider reading out loud to give yourself some practice with expression and sounding out words, understanding where you have gaps in things that you know how, know how they look, but don't know how they sound, using a dictionary um, to find those spaces. And then I guess I've said this over and over again, but I think no matter what, you should do it for fun. Read for fun, then it's something that will sustain you. If you find science fiction stories fun, if you find knitting fun, if you find um, salsa dancing fun, then find things to read that you enjoy. It should not be a chore. If you find poetry fun, that's great. <laughs> you can read poetry, read Growl and Poe. But I, again, like I think that if you want to enhance your English and take it to the next level, you really need to make reading a part of something you do regularly as a language learner. Okay. We talked about many things today. Um, I will send a list of all the links so they can be included with this presentation when you, when you watch it. But I guess I would say that learning a language is kind of like blowing bubbles. You need to continue doing it. There are many different beautiful ways that you can pursue to practice and to better your language skills. It's a process that never ends. Well, it might, I mean, I guess bubbles end, but you can blow some more. And um, they're beautiful and motivating and fun. And so I hope today you found a few things, maybe participating in an online course, maybe listening to a short podcast, maybe watching something new, or even reading some poetry that might enhance your English and motivate you to continue learning wherever your level is, maintaining, growing, and stretching your language skills so you can be more successful. You can find more resources for language learning and also language teaching through the Regional English Language Office. You, our website where we have free resources on both of those topics is americanenglish.state.gov. I've talked about it many times here today. You can look for other types of resources there. If you happen to be someone who does 
tutoring for other students or English language teaching. The majority of resources there are for teachers, um, but there's something for everybody, so I encourage you to check it out. If you would like to be in touch with the Regional English Language Office, you can email me and my office. The email is relotalin, the two L's and two N's, relotalin at state.gov. I would love to hear from you, and it's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Good luck on your language learning journeys, and I hope that your language skills will be enhanced by some of the elements of this presentation. Thank you very much.